hopefully that everybody is excited because we got a lineup of very, very uh, good, uh, inspiring personalities that is coming on stage. So I would like to call upon first on stage is Dr. Zainal Arifin Ahmad from the Academy of Science Malaysia. You can see he has his white, is that a thobe? We call it what? A white robe, eh? You know. Co lab, lab coat, oh my god, oh my god, uh, science, science, uh, lab coat, okay, lab coat, and um, how are you, doctor? He's doing fine, so he's going, uh, doctor, doctor Zaina is going to be the moderator, and we will go on for our first panel, we, I would like to call on Jasmine Irisha Jim Ilman. From Jeffrey, uh, is it? Satch Center? Oh, 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 don't like that. Just, just marah je. Salah. Hey, hey. Women can macam tu kan? It's so... Okay, tak ya. Teruskan. Okay. And then the next one I would like to call is Muhammad Mahfuz Al-Hafiz, Muhammad Faizal. The, the brother of Fridos Nisha, Muhammad Faizal. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's his sister. Uh, she could not make it because she had an, uh, errands to do, just like an uh, emergency, right? All right, and we have the beautiful, hmm, the most dazzling, ha -ha, that is Dr. Jasmine Lim. <laughs> and we also have our sister from Indonesia. <laughs> okay, don't start like that. All right, so we like to also call... Uh, Safira Al-Farisi. Sila ya, Bu. Eh, bukan Bu. <laughs> Pak. Pak laki kot. <laughs> and so, we have our panelists and moderator on stage. I would just like to ask again. Is everybody ready? Are you? Oh no, they're not ready. They're not ready. Guys, you are ready, they are not. <laughs> Can you? Okay, boleh duduk? Settle. Oh, dia terus macam, pup. <laughs> terus duduk macam tu. <laughs> boleh, boleh, boleh. <laughs> okay. Jangan takut. Alah, kita tegur sikit je dah malu. <laughs> Alright. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. InsyaAllah, without further ado, I leave the floor to doctor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Selamat pagi semua. Ya, belum belum tengah hari lagi kan? Ya. Terima kasih pengurusi majlis. I'm Sanwa. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what day it is? Yes. Ya. Yeah? And what's the topic of the day? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Uh, what's the topic of the day? Women and girls in and Sustainable development and social impact or social revolution. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, because the theme is science, I would like you to experience science a bit. Can I have everybody to stand up, please? All right. Now, in silence, with straight face, no smiling, look to the person to your right and to your left okay. and look again to your right and to your left don't say anything if you think that that person is beautiful nod your head Do you feel like shaking his or her hand? Hug? Yeah? Uh, well, I won't do it here. <laughs> what I'm asking you to do is to experience autism. Now, today, we are lucky. We have in our crowd is, uh, we have members. Uh, Nurul, where are you? Ah, hi, Nurul. Nurul is from uh, Noha K. 
Kids Care Centre. Yeah. Nurul and myself and many others. We work with special children. There are in Malaysia every year 9,000 autistic children being born. To date, there are about uh, 14,000 or 12,000 registered with ASD and there are 47 of us. When I say us, I'm talking about people on the autism spectrum disorder. What you just experienced by looking to the beautiful person next to you and without having the ability to say anything. Imagine a person with autism, one of the things that he or she is going through. Yeah? They are trapped inside. Now, that is the kind of research that we Malaysians, women, girls and boys, must go into. Technically, there are 300,000 of us in Malaysia in a population of 30 million. We need more research on this matter. Have I given you a clue? Yeah? So, thank you. Have a seat. Yeah? So, that was a serious note. Now we're going to have fun. Yeah? Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, what's going to happen is that the four beautiful people in front of here, yeah? um, not me included, uh, we're going to have three rounds. The first round, each one of them will introduce themselves, the organization that they, do, uh, they work with, and the kind of things that they do. Now, you as members of the crowd, you have your slido.com account already, right? Okay. On the last cycle, the fourth cycle, each and every one of you will have an opportunity to ask questions. And I would appreciate if you could maybe say, uh, this question is directed to Jasmine. So just put, Jasmine, tada, 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 your question. Or Hafiz, yeah? or Dr. Jasmine, or uh, Shafira. Uh, and we'll, we'll hear about each and every one of them after this. Yeah? Now, while you're sitting there comfortably and we are in the hot seat, I also would like you to use technology, as Dato had mentioned in her presentation. Yeah? When I grew up in Lasal, yeah? Lasal Klang, bukan Lasal PG, eh? uh, we didn't have those technology, uh, and we were not supposed to bring a handphone to the to the school anyway. Yeah? You have at your access the internet. You can Google any information that you want in order to prepare yourself to ask these questions. May I divide the room because today is three. Yeah, T S D, Tuesday. The middle, the first S, are the science people. I expect questions on science, given the topic of the day, coming from people in the middle of the room. To the side, I expect the second S, the sustainable development kind of issues. If you don't know what sustainable development is, ask Abang Google. Yeah. What are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals? Who's in charge of Sustainable Development Goals in Malaysia? Go ahead. If you play with your handphone, I won't be angry. Because I know you're looking for knowledge. Last but not least, on the theme of today, the social enterprise revolution. Yeah? And you might say, we are here to learn about social enterprise. She's going to tell you about what social enterprise and social revolution is all about. I want you to be prepared. Can we agree on that? Excellent. So let's the show begin. With that, without further ado, may I invite our first speaker. Yeah, uh, the full name is Muhammad Mahfuz Al Hafiz Muhammad Faisal. I'll just call him Hafiz. I have very bad memory. He is here uh, representing uh, Sister Firdaus Nisha. Yeah, if you can tell us a bit about yourself about what your uh, organization is all about and how does it relate to the topic of the day. Very good morning. It's still morning or oh, afternoon already, 12.05. Yeah. Um, as mentioned, my name is Hafiz. A lot of people can't remember my name, so I always tell them, take a fish, cut it in half. It's half a fish. 
All right. Um, so I, I'm going to give you guys a very basic background of myself because uh, I'm here on behalf of my sister. So I'll, um, yeah, before I start, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to talk about my sister. Not very hard, uh, not very easy to be able to mengumpat kakak sendiri in a forum like this. So <laughs> uh, I'll talk more about her and the organization that she founded. Um, I, my background is in chemical engineering. Uh, that's my undergraduate degree, uh, and then I went on to do two masters, one in renewable energy and resource, and the other one in resource management. Currently, I'm doing mixed engineering research, uh, where I do civil engineering, uh, architectural engineering, hydrological engineering, and computational engineering all together, where I look at energy optimization. So that's a lot of science and engineering there. <laughs> um, that's about me. I'm more of a bidden terjun for my sister, and hence today I'm representing her. Uh, Nisha's background is in uh, aeronautical engineering. That's what she went out um, to go and study. Uh, she came back, worked in the oil and gas for a bit, uh, worked for an American company, and then Petronas, and then she worked for Accenture for a few years uh, as a regional um, HR person, you know, which looks at uh, developing modules for, for the people within Accenture. Um, being in, corporate, in the corporate world, she felt the need to, um, I guess, get out of that um, circle and, and uh, do what she really uh, is passionate about. Uh, as we were growing up, uh, we always um, spent our holidays in, in forests, uh, going up hiking, uh, looking for trails. Um, we are uh, MNS Life members. I was one ever since I was in my mom's womb. Uh, so nature has always come um, natural to us. Um, so Nisha founded Ecocentric Transitions um, some 10 years ago, uh, and it was based on the Malaysian, uh, sorry, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. And then um, a few years after that, uh, she was invited to talk about uh, SDGs when it first started off in Malaysia. And now we run all our programs based on uh, certain SDGs that hit um, each pillar of our program. Um, Ecocentric Transition started as a uh, sustainability consultant. So we consult uh, developers, we consult corporates on how to um, develop sustainably, work within a corporate setting sustainably, uh, how, how can they change their systems to become more sustainable. But uh, we realized uh, that our niche was more towards education. So we focus, we are currently still doing what we've been doing uh, before, but now heavily focusing on environmental education. Uh, how our environmental education uh, system works within ecocentric transitions is that um, although we try to think and uh, create modules out of the box, but the way the system in Malaysia is um, it's very siloed in, in, in sections, so we have to work um, in the same way in order to be able to deliver it to um, the standards of the day uh, in, in Malaysia. Therefore, uh, we currently have three main um, Pillars. The first pillar is uh, called Gang Jari Hijau. Gang Jari Hijau is an agriculture-based program for uh, school children where we go out to schools. Um, we have a six-month program with them. We talk about agriculture. A lot of people think talking about agriculture is just about planting things. Uh, the way we develop our programs, our modules, is that, yes, we talk about how can you grow your own food, but then we go back to uh, why are we actually talking about agriculture. So we're talking about food security and uh, the sustainability of food supply. Um, then we talk about um, soil science, we talk about uh, design, we talk about uh, garden designs, we talk about what needs to be designed in gardens. So we bring in maths and architecture in it. Um, and then we also talk about irrigation, so we have uh, hydrological engineering aspects to it. Uh, we, develop, uh, we deliver our modules uh, all around Malaysia, uh, currently focusing on Perlis, Trungganu, and Pahang. Uh, so the different um, geological aspects of Perlis and Trungganu, for example, uh, one state may, have, uh, may be facing drought, another state may be facing uh, floods. Uh, within the same span of the program when we're running it. So we have uh, school children talk to each other on a platform where they discuss why is it that uh, you can grow a certain type of vegetable uh, in your state and I can't, and why uh, does a certain type of vegetable uh, thrive in my state. So those are the kind of uh, environmental aspects that we, uh, we, we get children to talk about, but 
through an agriculture-based program. All our programs that we develop are uh, based on um, subjects that are being taught in school, uh, be it through science or through RBT or through maths or even through English uh, and Bahasa Malaysia. So most of our, all of our programs are in dual language. Uh, and we can perform it in um, Mandarin or Tamil uh, when we go into uh, Sekolah Jenis Kebangsaan. Uh, that is the uh, agriculture program, which is called Gang Jari Hijau. Our second pillar is uh, Gang Peduli Sampah. So we want kids to understand what is waste, uh, how do you go around waste. So we talked about earlier uh, with the designer on, uh, I guess a person called Z asked the question, how can we turn fashion, in, uh, recycle fashion? And this is one of the modules that we have within our Gang Peduli Sampah. So we look at waste, we look at, we look at waste management, we look at how you turn waste into resources as well. And from here, we then again tie it back to SDGs, we talk about circular economy, we talk about closing the loop uh, when you talk about uh, waste in general. And then uh, moving along, <laughs> the, the, part, the third uh, pillar is um, Gang Peka Alam. Gang Peka Alam talks about the environment. Um, and we talk about animal conservation, environmental conservation, we talk about anything that has to do with forests and the environment. How do we then take care of the forest? Uh, and um, I probably will answer questions later, but this is one of the education modules that's, uh, that we've developed. So it's a card game. Uh, and um, it talks about 30 Malaysian endangered species. Uh, most students, uh, kids in Malaysia now, if you ask them about uh, what kind of wildlife do you know? Most of them would say giraffes or zebras or uh, lions. We don't have any of those in Malaysia. So we try to explain to kids or introduce to kids our own animals. Why is it important for us to know our own animals? And then uh, through the animals, we talk about the forest. So the card game is called Rimba, which is hutan rimba, uh, hutan. But for us, it's also, it also means uh, reptilia, ikan, mammalia, burung, amphibia. So it's the five main uh, animal kingdoms. And within the card game, we've got all five animal kingdoms. Uh, and there is so much more ways to play the game and to um, turn it into an educational tool uh, for kids to learn about the environment. And these are the three main uh, pillars of our environmental education. Coming back to how we are sustainable, uh, sorry, uh, a social enterprise is that we are not an NGO. Uh, we run as a social enterprise and we uh, make sure that people don't get confused because uh, some people think we are an NGO, we are not an NGO. Uh, but everything that we've developed, we've been uh, blessed to uh, not have any debt. So we run small projects, we make money, then we go on to do more projects and we make sure that every single project that we do has an impact back to the, uh, to the society. One very simple um, I guess explanation on why, how we are sustainable and how we are uh, a social enterprise is that um, the, uh, back to the Gang Jari Hijau program, we go in for six months. At the end of the program, we do not want to go back to the same school. We want to hit as many schools, all schools in Malaysia as possible. So we go in for six months and then we exit by giving every single thing, hard copy, soft copy, train the teachers. Everything is given to the teacher so that the teacher can then continue on with the program for years to come. And we are always there for them to call us back, ask us um, to clarify things, to help them out with any problems that they have. But being true to ourselves, uh, we are sustainable in a way where we don't want to go back to the school so that the school can then run it themselves. And then we can then impact more people. And I guess, yeah, that, that's a bit of an introduction of what we do. Thanks. Excellent. So for the teachers, lecturers, students in this crowd, yeah, I hope that you will take note of what half fish have already shared with you. Yeah? So the other half is for you to remember. All right. So moving right along, may I invite Jasmine Irisha Jim Iljam, Research Associate of the Jeffrey Sachs Center for Sustainable Development, Sunway? Please. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jasmine Irisha Jim Ilham, and I wish I'm here to talk about my sister, but unfortunately not. I have two amazing sisters, but I'm here to talk about myself instead. Um, my name is Jasmine, and I have a background in environmental science. I graduated with a degree in environmental science from the University of Nottingham, Malaysia campus, uh, which is located in Semenyeh. Do you guys know where Semenyeh is? Broga, 
Yeah, it's just around the corner. <laughs> Uh, and I'm currently attached with the Jeffrey Sachs Center on Sustainable Development. Um, if you guys don't know who Jeffrey Sachs is, you can Google Sachs spelled S-A-C-H-S. Um, and what I do at the center is that I'm a research associate, uh, which means that I do research on mainly policy. Uh, and the area that I'm in charge of is anything and everything related to the environment. Uh, we mainly do policy research on the SDGs, which is the Sustainable Development Goal. And under the environmental sector, I sort of handle uh, the purviews of forest biodiversity and climate change. I've been with the center for about over a year now, and I think it's very much relevant to the topic that we're discussing today, which is uh, sustainable development. I also have quite a number of experiences um, working together with policy, not only locally, but internationally as well. And I see there's a lot of young people here in the audience. Young people, you guys are young, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share a bit on my experience also being part of the Malaysian Youth Delegation. So the Malaysian Youth Delegation is uh, CSO, which is a civil society organization, or also known as an NGO, a non-governmental organization, which focuses solely on climate change. And climate change uh, in a sense of policy, advocacy, and negotiations. And I've been together with this NGO for about three years or so now. And uh, what I do with this NGO is that we track uh, policy changes uh, in the climate change area. And I've been attending uh, for the past couple of um, United Nations Conference on Climate Change. So um, you guys can throw me around questions relating to sustainable development, United Nations, and also local policy. So we're here to talk about intergenerational equity, which means that young people have a large stake in deciding what's best for our future. We need not to use the amount of natural resources that we're using right now, we can actually take a step back and put a limit towards whatever and um, anything and everything that we're using today. So in line with the sustainable development goals and also being an environmentally conscious um, young individuals that we are here today, uh, there are a lot of things that we can do to ensure that the future that we live in is just, which means that it is fair and also it is there for our future generations to come. All right, excellent. Now we've had two speakers who have already throw out a few words for you to think about. Social entrepreneurship, sustainable development, science, yeah? the key themes for today. So we're gonna listen to two more speakers. With that, may I invite Dr. Jasmine Lim, who is a medical entrepreneur. So what is a medical entrepreneur? Hi, a very good morning. Okay, and to be very honest, you know what's in my head? Uh, Prof. Dr. Noraini. Because <laughs> every time she speaks, it reminds me of my Guru Basa and my, like, my mentor. So she's just in my head all the time. Okay, by the way. Um, by the way, I'm Dr. Jasmine. Um, I've been a science girl through, through all my life. Um, secondary school in... A levels, and then I took my foundation, and I stepped into. Um, I went to Manipal and I did my medical degree in Manipal, and I came back, and I decided to pursue to do my PhD. So, I currently um, own and the CEO of this company called Cell Biopedics, where what we do is we actually commercialize research work. And the reason why I thought of venturing into this is because when I was really doing my PhD. Actually, I wanted to do my master's, and then I was offered to convert to PhD. And then after that, we kind of like expanded my, my proposal. And with that, I realized that in, in, in the science industry and in research, and what we always do is we just do our research in the lab, research, research, research for six years and ten years. And what we, what we are lacking in is actually converting our research work and to commercialize it out to society. So. So if, if you are ever in the research world, I would encourage you, I will encourage you if you're ever writing a proposal right now, always think about how we could actually make a difference to the society rather than doing a research for, you know, for your own benefit or for what you are 
you want to do. So always for me, I think we should focus to the society and what, how we can benefit the society. And I'm also working and collaborating with many um, couple of universities abroad who are frontier of the, the stem cell therapy industry, um, working into innovation of cosmetic products where currently, we, yeah, it's, it's already been approved by Ministry of Health where we actually incorporate um, stem cell derived um, ingredients into cosmetics. And I'm also the co-founder of The Joke Factory. It's actually Asia's premier comedy hub where um, our goal here is to de-stress and rejuvenate internally where we actually feel that, you know, laughter is, um, is without a language where, you know, at the end of the day, we all need to laugh. And so, you know, we all need to laugh and laughter doesn't have a language and that's what we just, start, we just started this business probably about eight, uh, eight, nine months ago in Publica. And I'm also a co-founder of Famex Talk, um, where what we do, okay, inspired by TEDx Talk, but we were focused on the unconference method, moderated sessions like this, where we conduct um, and discuss controversial, sensitive, inspiring issues in relation with women. So it's Famex Talk. Issues like... For example, teenage pregnancies, yeah, it sounds very, yeah, so we had that, we had that session, it was a very powerful session where we kind of like tell you what to do, what parents can do, what the girls could do, where you could go, um, interracial marriages and stuff like that. So we, because we believe everything starts in society, um, we are now focusing on our career and it's just, you know, to ways to make money, but we actually forget where we actually come from and everything starts from home. So for Femex Talk, we actually um, focus on bringing together empowered women and hopefully you could go out there to empower other women out there. Thank you. So last but not least, again, another word that was thrown out, community, research. Yeah? So put that in the back of your mind. The other thing is that this session will be conducted multilingual. Yeah? We're going to do it in Bahasa and in English. So feel comfortable yeah, to, to do it in any way. Now, we are very honoured that we have, uh, no, I have to pronounce your name properly, uh, is Safira Al-Farisi. Okay. Ms. Safira Al-Farisi is from Indonesia and I hope that after you listen to her, you will find that the STEM issues is not just limited to Malaysia. It is a Nusantara thing. So with that, Safira, can you share? Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. Wah. <laughs> hello, everyone. If I say hello, please to answer me with hi. And if I say hi, please answer me with hello. Can you get it? Okay. Once again, hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello, hi. <laughs> Very good. Please give applause to all of us. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Safira Alfarisi, and you guys can call me Safira. I'm from Indonesia, uh, from Jakarta. Do you know Jakarta? Have you ever been to go to Indonesia? Really? Or oh, what? Uh, what cities? that you have been there before? Jakarta? Bali? Bandung? Raise your hand. Bali, Bali, Bali. Bali? Raise your hand, please. Oh, how about Jakarta? Bandung? Okay, there's a lot of Malaysian people go to Indonesia. Thank you. It's such an honor to me. And it's also such an honor to me to be here, to be in Malaysia, to be in the cities because of Dr. Maliki invited me to be one of the speaker, and I really, really love Angel and also happy to see you guys. Salam kenal semuanya. Kenapa uh, sok sok Malaysia ya, tak apa-apa ya. <laughs> Kenapa aku senang berada di Malaysia? Karena aku adalah anak pertama dari tujuh bersaudara. Nah, berarti aku punya berapa adik? Enam. Dan keenam adikku itu setiap hari nonton Upin Ipin. 
kalau nggak upin ipin bobo boy <laughs> jadi banyak banget uh, dialog dialog Malaysia yang aku suka dan kayak logatnya itu sangat amat cute comeh <laughs> uh, macam ipin kayak betul 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 <laughs> jadi ketika sampai di Malaysia wah kayak masya allah langsung uh, nak cari tok dalang baru <laughs> tak dalang tak ada ya nah uh, uh, that's a simple uh, humor from me uh, uh, and I'm standing and I'm sitting here as a founder and also president from beasiswa sepuluh ribu uh, the operator maybe can show me the picture of my foundation beasiswa sepuluh ribu kalau teman-teman lihat atau adik-adik lihat ini seperti gambar apa yang bilang seperti topi toga tunjuk tangan topi ketika wisuda graduation ah <laughs> tak paham <laughs> ya yeah. uh, the graduation hat ya yeah. please raise your hand everyone okay thank you And for a view who see this like uh, kotak amal, tahu kotak amal? Tabung, Tabung di surau. <laughs> Tabung di surau. Please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. And both of them is right or both of them is true because our logo, beasiswa logo, is represent uh, the kotak amal, Tabung surau, and also the graduation hat. It means that our foundation. Want to collect the money from the Indonesian and also from all of the people around the world to give a better education to the people uh, maybe have a poor condition and also don't have a lot of money to study and something like that. So with only sepuluh ribu rupiah, if it convert to the ringgit, it's like tiga ringgit. Yeah. Only tiga ringgit for each people. Uh, if you donate that money, you will help the other people, the other students to get a better education. So that is uh, a little bit philosophy of my program. Dan kenapa warnanya kuning? Karena berdasarkan penelitian dari Oxford University, warna kuning adalah melambangkan semangat, optimisme, keceriaan, dan juga berkarya. Gitu. Jadi Kenapa dipilih warna kuning? Karena ingin merepresentasikan millennials. Teman-teman tahu millennials? Anak muda. We would like to gain all of the youth around the world, uh, mostly in Indonesia, to contribute to our country, uh, mostly in education ways. Dan di slide selanjutnya, ini adalah social media dari beasiswa 10 ribu. Ada yang tahu ini profile dari akun apa? Instagram, betul. Kita punya username at beasiswa 10 ribu, baru berjalan satu tahun yang dijalankan oleh anak-anak muda, terutama saya sendiri, usia saya 18 tahun, pada saat saya membangun ini. Oke. Dan saat ini usia saya adalah, ada yang bisa tebak berapa? Usia saya 20 tahun karena satu tahun difokuskan untuk research. Kayak kondisi mana di Indonesia yang butuh uh, perhatian lebih? Apa sih yang dibutuhkan oleh pemuda? Kenapa pada kesulitan untuk membayar kuliah dan lain sebagainya? Dan satu tahun ketika melalui research tersebut saya menggait teman-teman saya, I gain all of my people, all of my friends from Indonesia to do this uh, social Uh, experiment or social project dan di tahun 2018 akhirnya telah terciptalah beasiswa 10.000 yang diakui oleh Kementerian Pendidikan Republik Indonesia pada tanggal 14 Maret 2018 nah kalau teman-teman ada Instagram bolehlah di follow tapi nggak janji di follow back <laughs> di slide selanjutnya teman-teman bisa lihat bahwa di beasiswa 10.000 next slide please Ya, yeah. uh, in beasiswa 10.000, we have 2,000 volunteers in 15 cities in Indonesia. 
Jadi 2.000 anak muda yang siap berkontribusi di Indonesia terbagi di 15 kota itu terangkum semua dalam beasiswa 10.000 untuk menciptakan pendidikan yang lebih baik. Tetapi 2.000 adalah yang lolos seleksi, Bapak. Jadi yang mendaftar adalah 8.000 orang yang tersebar di seluruh kota di Indonesia. Dan ini adalah wilayah pertama yang terdiri dari Bandung, tadi ada yang bilang Bandung, udah pernah ke Bandung. Jadi ada Bogor, Bandung, Bekasi, Depok, dan Jakarta. Slide selanjutnya, next slide berasal dari wilayah 2, yaitu Solo, Surabaya, Yogyakarta, dan Semarang. Dan slide selanjutnya, wilayah 3 dari Padang, Palembang, Lampung, dan Medan. Serta Makassar di akhir. Nah itu adalah our volunteers. And we did a lot of activities in education, uh, such as we re renovated the school uh, in our division. We have three division. First division is pengumpulan dan penyaluran donasi. Jadi kami mengumpulkan donasi dari orang-orang dan kami menyalurkan dalam bentuk renovasi sekolah. Sekolah-sekolah yang tidak layak itu direnovasi. Lalu kedua kami memberikan bantuan berupa alat tulis, buku-buku belajar, uang tunai, beasiswa, dan lain sebagainya. Dan program ketiga adalah kami membuat gerakan Rp10.000 yang kami kumpulkan donasi secara nasional di Indonesia setiap tanggal 10 di setiap bulannya. Dan kami beritahukan total dana yang terkumpul setiap tanggal 1 bulan selanjutnya. Nah, di divisi yang kedua, yaitu divisi, peng, divisi program pendidikan, kami menyelenggarakan pengabdian masyarakat. Teman-teman tahu pengabdian masyarakat? It's a community service to disadvantages areas in Indonesia or a rural area or border area such as Kalimantan Barat, Entikong, perbatasan Indonesia, Malaysia. Di sana hanya ada satu sekolah dan aku udah cakap ke Dr. Maliki, hanya ada satu sekolah di sana, sekolah SD dan tidak ada junior high school, tidak ada senior high school. Dan di SD tersebut hanya ada kelas 1, 2, dan 3. Untuk melanjutkan ke kelas 4, 5, dan 6, mereka anak-anak siswa SD harus berjalan kaki. They have to walk for one hour every single day. Dan kondisi di sana benar-benar jauh dari internet, jauh dari electrical, uh, kayak beda banget, sangat amat jauh berbeda dengan kondisi di kota. Dan yang lebih parahnya lagi, hanya terdapat satu guru untuk tiga kelas tersebut. Bisa dibayangkan mungkin Bapak uh, dosen pernah mengajar di USU, satu kelas biasanya ada berapa dosen Pak yang mengajar? Kalau ikut program, dia satu subjek at least satu, mm -hmm. paling tidak satu subjek uh, dua. Satu dua subjek dosen. dua gitu. Yeah. Ini untuk tiga kelas SD 1, 2, 3 hanya satu guru. Dan bisa dibayangkan anak kecil kan susah diatur ya. Jadi kayak mereka uh, lari ke sana kemari. Jadi satu guru mengajar di kelas 1, lalu pindah ke kelas 2, pindah ke kelas 3 uh, dengan kondisi yang sangat amat tidak efektif. Setelah itu selesai kami melaksanakan pengabdian masyarakat di desa tersebut. Ketika pulang ke tempat asal, ke Jakarta, kami bantu advokasikan masalah tersebut ke pemerintah. Uh, we advocate that problem to the government uh, in Jakarta to send the teacher from that place. To send the teacher uh, on the border area and Alhamdulillah, right here, right now, the teacher is in the process to send to the Antikong, Kalimantan Barat. Excellent. Alhamdulillah. And the third uh, division is education event. Education event, it's like our volunteers, uh, pengurus pusat, or pengurus daerah, volunteers made an event or made a program to uh, dana operational, to the operational money to our foundation, such as they make an international uh, international youth summit. Uh, saat ini telah berjalan kelima negara, yaitu Malaysia, Singapura, Sydney, Australia, Hong Kong, dan Korea Selatan yang nanti akan berangkat Juni. Dan itu semua dilaksanakan atau digerakkan oleh millennials, digerakkan oleh anak-anak muda yang dananya kami kumpulkan sendiri untuk memberangkatkan anak-anak yang berprestasi ke luar negeri. Itu adalah yang kami laksanakan. Alhamdulillah. Dan, alhamdulillah. The next is we have uh, we did 
an education uh, program such as seminar, talk show, uh, international conference, and uh, we make uh, education, educational course, and also mentoring, and something like that. So basically, all of the education program uh, in Indonesia is uh, launched by our foundation from beasiswa 10.000 yang digerakkan oleh millennials, yang digerakkan oleh anak muda, dan digerakkan oleh saya sendiri yang masih berstatus pelajar, masih berstatus mahasiswa di IPB tingkat 3 dan saya adalah wanita. I'm a woman, I'm a girl, and I can do it. So it means gender is nothing. I mean, boy or girl can do a lot of activities. Women, a girl can do a big impact. And I did a big impact in my country, in Indonesia. Makanya kenapa bisa diundang presiden oleh Indonesia, Presiden Joko Widodo, bisa diundang berbagai acara such as United Nations, PBB, to speak in international forum, dan lain sebagainya. Karena saya merepresentasikan ilmu, science, yang saya pelajari di jurusan kayak saya, di jurusan komunikasi, untuk uh, diimplementasikan di Indonesia dan jika saya bisa teman-teman dari Malaysia pasti lebih bisa terima kasih Excellent. wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Excellent. Uh, All right. Miss Safira is uh, 20 now I think oh, saya baru 25 <laughs> kan tapi terbalik uh, now as I mentioned just now we're gonna have three rounds and the first round focuses on science you've heard Science being mentioned just now, yeah. How science mendasari ataupun you need science to be the basis of whatever that we do, be it in social enterprise, be it in research, yeah, be it in uh, in res uh, what the kind of sustainable development that we're doing. Can I ha ask your thoughts? Because uh, teacher Yasmin and also Dato Noraini just now highlighted that we have a problem. Girls and boys are not encouraged or not being encouraged by their families to go into science. Partly because maybe there's no money in science. You know, uh, everybody sees that business yeah. is the way to make money or to, to, to survive. What are your thoughts on that? How can we encourage parents or families or communities to push the science agenda for the boys and girls in the communities that you just shared about? So who would like to maybe share their thoughts on the kind of things that you do that you see evidence that this is being done and in parents are involved in this? Anyone? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a question later on, but um, I think we need to first of all look at it as what is sex and what is gender? Um, you say that um, girls or women are not in science. Uh, I have been privileged enough to be in an upbringing where all the women in my life are very strong, <laughs> and very science-based. Um, they are either doctors or engineers, and uh, that's from my grandparents to my mom to my aunts to my cousins to my sister. Um, and for me, I don't see a difference between uh, deprived of uh, the opportunity of science, but I do understand that it is there. It's just that I was not brought up in that um, situation or uh, that kind of thinking. Uh, so we need to really understand what is sex and what is gender. Why are we as people biased um, based on gender? Um, the, uh, because uh, it's a girl, she may not be able to do certain things. Um, because he's a boy, he's probably more prone to do certain things. Um, but coming back to doctor's uh, question, how do we encourage uh, this interest of science uh, in kids, especially in girls? Um, I currently take care of my niece, who is 10 years old. Uh, it's a she. <laughs> uh, she's a handful. <laughs> but she helps us develop our modules, so she is a product tester. So every time we have a module that we want to run for kids, we get her input. And this is like proper, like sit at a corporate table kind of, okay, which color do you like? And she chooses that color and we go with that color. Because we're adults, we don't really think as kids anymore, so we give her the opportunity to dictate certain uh, decisions and it also helps in her 
uh, confidence uh, when she is with other people and she's with uh, and when she's in schools. Uh, we run programs, um, exhibitions, and we include her uh, as her guardian right now. Um, shouldn't be saying this in front of uh, orang kementerian, but I do allow her to skip school so that she can attend conferences with us. She can attend. Uh, talks with us. I nearly brought her today, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, for us, it's really important for kids to understand science uh, from a kid's point of view. A lot of us are at very impressive stages. I know of a lot of people, a lot of women who are who hold uh, high positions and who do a lot of important work. But all of these are not trickled down back to kids, not trickled down back to our students, and. That is really important. Um, I think uh, aside from parents, our counsellors in schools play a very important role and that is lacking. Uh, we really need to train our counsellors in school to explain to children that you know it's not just engineering and uh, uh, law or um, medicine that you can uh, go into as your career. There's a lot more, there's a whole wide spectrum. Uh, I'm going to pick Dr. No. She does DNA in plants. Is that right? No? Yes. Whoever thought in school that you're going to do a PhD DNA in plants? Come on. Anyone? I will give you a prize if you did. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a great woman in science who's doing great things. Um, Sorry, no, for picking you. <laughs> but yeah, it's an example. Uh, how we encourage kids is through our programs. What we do is we bring high level work, high level research, uh, high level information, and then we turn it into a game. So we gamify information, and then we deliver this gamification to children. And it is applicable if you are. Um, Budak Tadika, Budak Sekolah Rendah, Budak Sekolah Menengah, even with university students, we use the same module. It's just that the vocabulary that we use is different. Uh, we introduce new vocabulary, uh, vocabulary, I can't even speak now, uh, uh, to kids um, based on what um, subjects we're actually teaching, whether it's maths or uh, environment or animals or plants and stuff like that. Uh, I will bring you back to Rimba as a very simple example. Uh, Rimba is, uh, again, uh, a card game that we developed so that kids can learn about Malaysian animals and then beyond that, learn about the ecology and why are they on the endangered uh, list and why are they at the rate uh, of the list. So you've got least concern, vulnerable, extinct, blah, blah, blah. Why are they on that specific uh, level of um, uh, endangerment or uh, extinction? And you talk about the environment that they live in and that's why they cannot thrive and then you talk about deforestation and you talk about ecology and then you talk about water you talk about uh, air quality and all of these are sciences which are connected but often not shown the connection to kids uh, and that's how we run our programs Uh, when Fauzia approached me for, for, for this conference and she was telling me about the number of um, girls in science streams have decreased, I actually went on ground to my, back to my old school, Methodist Girls School back in Klang. And I was rather taken aback where there used to be five classes, five science stream classes before, and now it's down to two. And there's only about 25 or 30 girls in each class, and this is literally a drastic drop, and coincidentally, it was the, the, the Science Week in, in their school, and what was beautiful about it is the Science Week was actually driven by the art student, so that really helped. So that really helped in encouraging the, the, the arts student to step up and to tell them that science is friendly. I think the perception that, that young girls have these days is science is tough, science is boring, and science is not cool, and if you literally look at the population on Instagram and Facebook these days, especially Instagram, there's the age of, of girls in, on Instagram is about 16 to 18 years old. And, and what are they following and who are they following? Those who post up OOTDs. Those who, as I mentioned once, I just wish OOTDs were the new 
trendy thing. I mean, I mean, sorry, science is the new trendy thing compared to OOTD. So, in that, knowing that you are on social media and you are so um, influenced by the, your fashionistas out there, I would like to encourage you girls to follow the, all these science-driven pages, um, quotes, all these positive pages. That would definitely help uh, young girls. And, and I personally think that young girls these days are also very into the entrepreneur side. Okay, the entrepreneur side, or I would say the non-science part. And science is definitely a very good foundation um, to start off with. Like my dad always tell me, Jasmine, I don't care, whatever happens, you need to get into science stream, whether you fail or you don't. So I was literally striving to get into science stream before because my, pet, my dad told me, no matter what happens, in which phase of your life, you could always fall back to your degree, regardless of what you are doing. So with that in mind, and today, I was in science stream all the time, and now I'm getting into the business element, and it really does help. And, and I personally think this definitely starts from home. It's how, how your, your parents encourage you to, to step into science. And I think most parents these days are also into, oh, look, my kids have 10A, my kids have 7A, but the A's are, you know, is, this, is that quality in the A's? Or, I mean, I'm, I'm not judging the art subject, but let's look into a different perspective. If it's okay to, to have least subject, but let's go into the science stream. Yeah. All right. Now, for those of you, if you have your slido.com on, yeah, start yeah, I think you're running out yeah, of time. Is start uh, adding your questions and please target to the, the persons <laughs> on the stage here. Now, we heard about science. I would like to hear about sustainable development also. Yeah. Um, how do we encourage our people, uh, both Malaysia and Indonesia, to give sustainable development the due credit and also to focus on the issues? Because we don't want to take away our children's future. Before I talk about sustainable development, I would just like to resonate a bit on what Dr. Jasmine pointed out. Science alone is not enough. Science does not exist in silo, science must coexist. It means that to be able to communicate well, to be able to educate well, to be able to get the message across, we need to have a lot of complementary skills for you to move science forward as a whole. It has to be something that is driven holistically and something that is being driven in a, driven in a wholesome manner. Um, just a few days ago, I was actually giving a talk to my uh, former alma mater. Um, I went to school at SMK Convent Bukit Nanas, and I was speaking to a bunch of uh, Form 1 until Form 5 students on the importance of pursuing their own interests and pursuing things in balance. Essentially, it's not about chasing all those A's. Yes, chasing A's is important. Having good grades is important, which will eventually leads you to the best universities, getting you the best jobs, but it's the skill set that will make you grow further and will make you, uh, will get you promoted in that dedicated job itself. Um, and reflecting back, um, I am very, very blessed and lucky to have a very strong support system growing up. Uh, my mom is in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> hi, mama. <laughs> She's the one who has been encouraging me to pursue what I like. And I also have a very strong uh, family background in terms of environment. Uh, my grandfather is a forester. He used to teach in FRIM, which is a Forest Research Institute of Malaysia. And uh, these are the kind of pushing factors for me to be involved in the field of environment. Growing up, I always thought of it, of as in of it as an interest like I pursued things uh, subconsciously like I went to volunteer in NGOs I went for tree plantings I went to workshops but little did I know that all this little little interest actually accumulates to something uh, which make me makes me think like I'm actually very serious about this I really want to pursue my interest so what I'm trying to say is that if you have a slight bit of interest which is not being taught in school like, I don't have a dedicated environmental subject when I was studying in school. I have, like, just like you guys, I have biology, chemistry, physics. They sound very boring, but they're actually very interdisciplinary in nature, which means that one must exist because of the other one exists. Um, which, 
in retrospect, actually makes a lot of sense because um, a lot of you will be pursuing fields which are interrelated to other fields. Like the people who are sitting on stage today, we might have a background in engineering, we might have a background in science. But we're, what we're doing now is something totally different, but also totally related. We're pursuing entrepreneurship, we're pursuing policy research, we're also pursuing education. So all this is uh, what we call a butterfly effect. You do something very small, but it ends up something being very big, uh, which also reflects in the community that we have nowadays. Uh, simple things, for example, as uh, reducing plastic waste or not using straws uh, when you're drinking and using metal straws instead. It helps reduces consumption and it helps reduces waste uh, uh, around the world. And because of our lifestyle, our choices, uh, what we plan to do and what we want to do, uh, it also reflects back to sustainable development. Sustainable development is something that we have to take seriously because if you are aware of the science, everyone here, I believe, believes in climate change. Uh, we actually only have 11 years to combat climate change before it turns into catastrophic events. And this is cited by the recently released uh, report on uh, IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So we are aware, people in this room are aware, that's why you're here. Not just the women, not just the girls, the boys here as well. And boys? Yes, boys, I see you. <laughs> Some of you might think like, you know, why am I, what am I doing here? It's a woman and girls punya conference, like, what am I doing here? We actually need you. We need you to support us, we need you to encourage us, and we need you to dare us to do better. And like our Facebook also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the world nowadays, we're not talking about equality. Equality is a term of the past. Uh, we're not asking for equal pay, we're not asking for uh, equal um, justice. We're actually asking for equity. We're asking for fairness. We're asking for just, and we're asking for us to be treated the same way, just like other people. Excellent, excellent point. Yeah. Now, before we go into the Slido, one of the research that came out of Indonesia uh, by Ibu Bovilinda, sorry, Bovila Kumasari. She said that in Indonesia, they have four models of social entrepreneurship. The four models are mixed-based, sharia-based, volunteerism-based, and also in terms of, uh, if I can see this, cooperation-based. Yeah? Which of these models are you operating on? Oh, bye. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, which one is border? Uh, absolutely, in the volunteerism way. Volunteerism. Volunteerism base uh, that I did, that I am uh, doing right now in Beasiswa Sepuluribu in my foundation. The focus on sustainable development goals point four or oh. quality education. Excellent. Yes, and we did all of that is because uh, back to the gender, back to the uh, sustainable development goals also point equality gender because we know that everyone is born to be a leader rather than girl or rather than boy everyone could be a leader and that's why I try my best I dare myself to lead uh, my foundation to encourage each other to uh, develop youth in Indonesia and also to pursue about a better education in my country so uh, my focus is in volunteerism and uh, I really love my job, my activities right now because it could support the sustainable development goals. Excellent. Can we hear from you all? Uh, is the slido on? Okay. Can you show the questions? If you guys can look to the slido, sorry, I, I have to move this way. Yeah, is, is the terminal on? Then it will be easier for us to, to see. Okay. For I'm just going to stand this side because so I, I cannot see. I'm from the science stream in high school, but, I, but now currently degree in business study. Is there any way that I could go back in science? Um, to make this really straightforward, if there's a will, there's a way. So, so I'm a person that I don't, I don't buy bullshit, I don't buy excuses. So if there's a will to do it, there's definitely a way, go find out. So that, that is 
what I would say. So for example that I will give is, when I wanted to do my, my master's or my PhD in stem cells and tissue engineering, there was no such, um, um, there, there was no syllabus. Uh -huh. So yeah, so I was parked under physiology, yeah. which, which I, is something that is, I didn't want to do. So, but I enrolled my supervisor and I told her, you know what, come on, take me as a student. I will prove it to you that I could do it. So for the, for the first nine months, I was, I was into that direction. And at the end, the, the, the Department of Tissue Engineering was actually formed in UKM. And I am actually the first woman who attained the PhD in stem cells and tissue engineering Excellent. in UKM. Excellent. And I was not driven to be the first. I didn't even know I was, the on, I was the only woman in the whole department until I graduated on my graduation day. And then I realized, oh, Jasmine, you are the first woman. I'm like, oh, okay. So I think it's all here. It's all up here. It's all your mindset. And sometimes maybe when you feel like, oh, you are the only woman right there, it's all men, and you feel small. And I think up here, I think this is the way how you change your mindset. And your goal should be literally just chasing after your goals and your vision. Excellent. Yeah. On that point, whoever raised that issue, please talk to your career counselling teacher or your pengetua. Go back to science. Okay? Now, anybody else? Any other questions? Hi, Jasmine. Oh. There you are. <laughs> okay, I'll answer my question. Hi, Jasmine. How do changing politics locally and internationally impact development of... Whoops, I cannot see it anymore. Of sustainable policy. A lot of things that we do uh, locally are driven by international policies and a lot of things that are being discussed at national platform are a reflection of what we want locally as a country. So there are many ways for you if you're interested to be involved in policy making. Like for myself, I come for, from a fully science background. I studied environmental science. And uh, what I do now is uh, policy research. This is because my key area of interest is the science and policy interface. But more than that, I'm interested to see like how science affects policy and how policy drives on the ground actions. Because if you don't have that, three-tier nexus, the science, policy, and action punya nexus, then things are not going to work in Malaysia. And because of this, you need to have a lot of stakeholders involved, and you have to push for them and lobby it within your own capacity. Doesn't matter if you're in the academics, doesn't matter if you're with the government, doesn't matter if you're a student. I feel that student voice are a very valuable voice and very important voice uh, that could carry forward big changes. Because Guys, girls, you're not alone. There are a bunch of you. And because you're so young, and because you have the willpower, and because you have the passion, then that will drive you forward. And that's will, that is what will make your voices heard. Excellent point. And just to show and demonstrate what happened, before the start of the event, I asked Anwar, Anwar, please remove all of these bottles from our desk, the table here. Because if you talk about sustainable development, it has to start from you. Yesterday, at the launching of the Setempat, uh, a social entrepreneurship uh, co-working space, we gave out, instead of gifts, bamboo straws. And when we saw the bottles there, we just freaked out. Uh -uh. Social entrepreneurship, sustainable development, and bottles, we don't go together. It's not romantic. Uh, is, by the way, Fairoz, are you still around? The fashion designer? He went back already. One of the things, please convey to him. How do we make the lab coat sexy so that people will become interested in science again? Yeah? All right. So, moving on. Other questions? Hafiz? Anything? Yeah. Or, uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. I'll try to answer the question. Safira, do you engage with other community like Indonesia Mengajar, Kitabisa.com, or something like that to improve education in rural area, especially like in a small island? The answer is yes, because Beasiswa Sepuluh is in charge and also collaborate with all of the foundation, all of uh, uh, legitimation in Indonesia, such as Indonesia Mengajar. For example, for the program 
beasiswa 10.000 mengabdi di Entikong. Uh, we did a collaboration with Indonesia Mengajar to send the teacher to that rural area. So for kitabisa.com, it's such a platform in Indonesia to crowdfunding platform. Uh, and we uh, joined a collaboration with kitabisa.com to collect all of money uh, in Indonesia to give them as a scholarship for the student and something like that. So we engage with all of, uh, with lots of uh, foundation, with lots of community, uh, to gain a lot of, uh, uh, to give lots of benefit and also to give lots of contribution to the students, to the youth in Indonesia. Excellent. People, in the interest of time, we have a lot of questions. If I can get your agreement, if the organizers can document all of these doc uh, questions, if we pass it back to the panelists, if you could spend some time and just give your thoughts on it, and then make it public somehow? Would that be, would that be workable? Yeah? Can we do that? Excellent. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, time mencemburui kita. <laughs> kan? So, may I invite each and every one of our panelists, uh, I don't want to say one breath, but in maybe one sentence also. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sustain itu. Um, maybe uh, to sum up, uh, what are your key message that you want people to take home? from this session tonight? All right. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, simple question, but very hard to answer. <laughs> uh, in one breath. No oh, less. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, just a summary of what I was seeing there. A lot of people are asking about uh, job opportunities for women in science. I think there are a lot of job opportunities. You just need to know what you want, uh, and you need to be assertive. Um, to get what you want. Um, there's another point I wanted to make uh, is that you need to humanize a lot of things. How do we get uh, kids, uh, girls uh, interested in science or engineering or manufacturing or math? Is, is to make sure that the way the subject is delivered uh, is delivered in a way where they understand it uh, in an application um, point of view as well, so um, it needs to be seen. Like a lot of people here would agree with me, at Mets when you go through at Mets uh, from four, from five, you really don't see why are we like what's the point of studying it. But trust me, if your teachers are smart enough to tell you where the application is going to be used, um, you can see a lot of job potential there, and then you can then uh, focus in on. Um, what you would like to do in future with the uh, intellect that you have right now, all the A's that you bring back after a big exam, uh, you need to revisit why are you trying to score an A in it. Uh, blanket disclaimer, I did not get all A's, but I'm, I've been a national scholar from Form 3 up to my PhD. So you don't need to have all A's, all right? It's great to have all A's, uh, UniKL students, I went to UniKL for my diploma and I'm doing a PhD. I did two masters in the UK and I'm doing a PhD in the UK. And uh, it doesn't mean that you don't go abroad straight away after SPM uh, that uh, your opportunity stops there. You know, you really need to work and talk to a counsellor and see uh, what are the potential things that you can, you can get into. And really there's no difference between uh, male or female, men or women, uh, boys or girls, you know, um, I think we've passed that, that gap. It's just that as a society, we need to acknowledge uh, the contributions that's being made by women because that is what is lacking right now and that is what is frustrating, I think, on their behalf is that most of what we guys uh, develop is very, very much acknowledged compared to what they do and they do a lot as well. So, yeah, that's my take on it. Okay, uh, for this session, I will tell you guys, especially for the women, especially for the millennials, that the world need us. World need our power, not just in Malaysia, but for in all around the world. With science, no matter what background are you, it's like a math or a physics or something like that, or even like me in a social, in a communication, in a humanitarian, we can do something. 
we can do something to our country, we can do something to our generation and to our world with uh, your action uh, as much as you can, as good as you can, that you can do, that you can did, uh, that you can give to your country for a better world and for a better sustainable development goals. Um, I would like to encourage you girls to be fearless. That's what I, I would I hope you take this home. Be fearless because usually fears holds us back. Fears holds back whatever we want to do. So and I want you to go back today and discover what are you unique at. So discover what you're unique at and trust me, that will be your strength. Because I believe we are all here for a reason. We are all here to contribute to the world and the society and discover that and I believe every each one of you is special. So have no fears and pursue your dreams. In terms of sustainability, I will always encourage and advise to people to do things within your own capacity. If you start thinking about all the problems in the world, you can't solve everything in the world, but the change can start within yourself. In school, you may struggle to be accepted. That's what you yearn for. You want to be accepted by society. You want to be accepted by your peers. Uh, but honestly, the truth is that for you to exceed and excel further is for you to stand out. Um, a few weeks ago, I actually attended a talk under the United Nations, uh, which also celebrated the International Women's Day. Um, and the talk, uh, one of the speakers was Dr. Maslan Othman. She is the Malaysian astrophysicist. And she was uh, based in Vienna, Austria, uh, for in the outer space office. And her advice is that I am not a risk taker, I'm a risk seeker. And I feel that is something that all of us here can learn from and all of us here can do. So what I want to tell you and what I want to impart is that it doesn't matter um, if you're not interested in science, uh, I, it's best um, if you pursue your own passion, uh, regardless if it's in the science field or the non-science field, because eventually, if you pursue your passion, then it'll take you a long way. May I invite science to rise? All the science people in the middle, please rise. I don't want to say stand, rise. Bangun. This is not a trick question like that to Noraini just now. May I invite the sustainable development people to rise? And the social entrepreneurs. If what the panelists shared with you today makes sense, triggered, and more importantly, inspire you, please give them a great round of applause. <laughs> and remember, we started with three S, yeah? Sustain, uh, uh, social entrepreneurship, science, sustainability, or sustainable development. The fourth S is Bushukur. On this Autism Awareness Day, Bushukur, that you are able to express yourself, whereas some of us cannot. So show your appreciation. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. <laughs>